gonna go over my mixes and what I did was I I had them all mixed for and I'm gonna put the color I mix here over here so that later for my students on Patreon I can label what the colors I use to mix the certain gray for each subject so I'm gonna start off with my flower mix and I'm just gonna double check the camera is still okay there we are we're still there okay hi Jodine <laughs> and hi Gail all right so I've got um, I've got some white and I'm gonna use some transparent brown oxide and a little viridian and that makes a nice kind of greeny gray so those three colors is kind of my standard um, go-to mix for flowers and now I'm gonna put that over on my little on my little chart here so that I can let later go back and label it so that was the viridian and white and transparent brown oxide now if, so let's say you were um, you didn't you were doing a rose or something and you wanted to kind of warm that up a little that mix um, you just add a little bit of that yellow ochre to it and you get a real warmy yellowy green and if you say wanted to make a, a it was, say you have a rose that has that real bluey gray color underneath you just add a little more viridian and you get sort of a bluey gray but it's still a green big difference from mixing cobalt into it so that would be my flower mix and i'm going to be labeling that later for you and then for um what did i have i i had it all organized before so for birds, okay, next I'm doing birds. I'm gonna use a little red oxide. Quite often birds have a little bit of a, a kind of rusty feathery color. So I'll use a little bit of a red oxide and I'll mix some, you can mix some viridian into that. Um, or what I will do is use a little red oxide and cobalt blue just mix some of that together to get sort of a warmy kind of brownie gray color and so let's just say for that that would be sort of a good you know medium range you know feather color for a white you know white feather on like a woodpecker or a chickadee so I'll put some of those down there and then I would add for the highlight feather, I might use a little bit of white and just a touch of, you know, that yellow ochre on top. And then you can add that on top of your, your other mixture of gray there. And you can just add a little more white into that yellow ochre mix to get a kind of a warm white highlight on a bird. Um, and that, that, uh, bluey color that, that you can mix up could be good for near the base of the bird's feathers, sort of a bluey, um, gray color just for the under, underneath area. So... So the grays for the birds I like is sort of this yellow oak, yellow ochre or rather the red oxide and cobalt blue and you can warm it up with yellow ochre in there. So it gives you something to do for, you know, when you're painting a chickadee or something with white feathers. You a lot of the time if you look carefully, they have a bit of that kind of rusty color near the wings. On, around the side and then that brings me to the next thing is landscapes and uh, porcelain gray so I really like the cobalt blue and a little bit of cad red um, 
medium and you'll see that makes a really pretty um, kind of grayish purple which is what really looks good if you're painting um, a shadow in the snow say of a tree or you have a fence and you have you need something kind of more interesting than just you know darker brown or something so I love that color and that's just cobalt and uh, the cad medium red medium and of course with less white you can get a darker um, version of it that can work too you know for a shadow and I also have used that in the past for painting you know a little so if you have like a little porcelain pot or something like that you can you can use a bit of that um, just to be different you know something a little different and um, if it's too cold let's just say you have a little flower in there um, just add a little yellow ochre to it because now, now you have um, a real good mix of purples so you can just add a little yellow ochre to that purple and that neutralizes it a little and warms it up so you could add that into the mix and of course you know you've got that basic shape but I, I like or you could add some more of the reddy colors to it if you had um, obviously it depends on your what's around it is what you gotta so if you have this kind of color flower you might add a little bit of this into the the porcelain but for the grays, I kind of like to use that, um, that sort of purpley gray for porcelain, and I like it in landscapes. It's just, it's pretty and different. Um, and then I think, oh, and I forgot to add that to my, my key, so I'll add some of that over here, and then later I'll write that color mix down for you. So basically cobalt and cad red medium and white. And I forgot to do this in my demo that you guys may have watched uh, my ceiling of my art room. You, I, you can add orange to the cobalt and get a really pretty um, gray, green, more of a green tone gray, a lot, you know, a lot more of a greeny gray than the obviously the red and the blue make more of a purple but it's also a really beautiful gray and that could also be uh, used in a porcelain as well or a landscape for that matter um, and then then I talked about uh, base gray so just sort of Another simple gray, transparent uh, brown oxide, white, and some ultramarine blue. And if it's too blue, don't panic. Just get a little more brown oxide, and then you'll get a, a really nice gray. You'll see that's like a really standard gray. And then um, if you wanted it to be a little on the brown side, of course, just add a little more brown oxide to it. So again, a really great color. I use it a lot, this, this mixture of gray. And you could, um, I'll add a little more white to it. And like I was saying earlier, um, you can take any color and sort of change your gray to a slight color you know, for a background, so you could mix up a little purple and just add a little bit of that purple into your gray and you'll get kind of a nice toned gray that is very subtly on the purple side, um, like, like this gray here versus this. And if I was doing 
let's say I, I paint a lot of sunflowers and I wanted just some hints of that purple. I kind of wanted it to be a neutral background, but I didn't want it to be really boring. Then I might, um, I might add a bit of that um, purple into my gray. Or if I had um, a really, you know, um, bouquet that had lots of colors, um, I might go with something more like this greeny gray that looks really beautiful around, uh, you know, a sunflower or something. So just mixing up grays is a good activity to do to get yourself in the mood to paint. This is just some palette paper. So today I kind of reversed everything. I'm painting on palette paper and, and putting the colors that I want on this canvas paper. Um, and so the main colors I used again, yellow ochre, white, viridian, green, transparent brown oxide, red oxide, cobalt blue, ultramarine blue, orange, and that cad red medium. Of course, there's millions of gray mixes out there that you can do, but I really, um, I really like uh, these grays. Um, and of course, like I said in the earlier video, uh, if you want a darker gray, just do um, something similar. Any of these browns and any of these blues will make a gray. So if I mix um, cobalt blue, transparent red oxide and white, I'll get a certain type of gray. If I get transparent brown oxide and some ultramarine blue, just add more Balance it out until you get a gray. So if it's too brown, just add a little more blue. And you, you'll see you're going to get this sort of dark, dark gray. And then you could even add a touch of that cad red to it to make it even more interesting. So, yeah, um, that's kind of, that's kind of my main gray mixes. And I'll be writing down what I mixed to make each of these and posting it to Patreon. So thanks for tuning back in. If you um, were tuned in earlier to my ceiling, now you actually get to see some paint. So uh, I hope you have a great day and try some of these color mixes out.